Vegas and Cisco Live. Welcome to our friends from Zenos and Mr. Ken Erickson. Ken? Hi there. Thank you. I don't get that. He won't give me the microphone. All right. One of the things you can get with your Cisco points is free upgrades on the seats. So if you're walking by, you can sit down in the seat right in the front row, the premier seats. All right. Well, we're right in the middle of the show floor, right in the middle of the week, and you're in the middle of the change that's happening in the what we're calling the dynamic data center. What did they do to my slide? Cool. Ah, they gave me a new headline. headline. I'm going to talk about managing the dynamic data center. The dynamic data center is all of the things that are happening at all of the different technology layers in the in the uh, data center these days. So let's take a look at this. The dynamic data center is here. We're seeing this problem show up right now. This is an example of what's going on in the VMware space, where things are moving around, and if you're trying to manage service in the data center, you're asking yourself, so is ESX1 part of my service? Is ESX2 part of my service? And it depends on what hour it is, and it depends on what time of the day it is, and things are moving around. And this is creating a lot of operational challenges for people. In the VMware space, what we see going on is something called stall which is people bump up to about 30, 35% virtualized, and then stop, because they can't, can't guarantee service anymore. They're just not sure how to manage this stuff. All right, now, part of the problem is that there's all these different silos. Um, here we've got some silos, fibers, racks, and routers, and one of the great things that we've got, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about here, is support for this wonderfully converged device called the Cisco UCS box. It's a great opportunity to do things. It also has to make a lot of changes to your data center. I was having lunch at a table where uh, a, a storage guy and a networking guy were arguing about which comes first, the WWDN or the egg, because you know one guy wants to do one first and the other guy wants to do the other first. All of this dynamic stuff makes changes across the entire data center. All right, so the dynamism is making a lot of changes happen in the way that people work. And it's not only in the way they work, but it's also in the tools they use. So many tools are statically configured. You use a CMDB and you'll try to update it and get it right. And meanwhile, the VMs are moving around on a minute-by-minute minute basis and your CMDB is wrong. And so all the tools that depend on the CMDB are wrong. The other thing that's happening is that it's blowing up people's mental models in the data center. I used to be able to walk over to an Exchange server and see how it was performing by looking at the shape of the CPU curve. Right? Once I virtualize the thing, I'm supposed to be running it at 90% CPU utilization. I can't tell anymore. My mental model of what a good running server looks like is gone now. So the tools have to help me with these, these, these build this new mental model up. Am I pressing the button or is it changing? Alright, so the old tools, we we come up with this term, uh, uh, my CMO is here, my CMO came up with this term called legacy fragmentigrated, which means you've got a bunch of siloed tools that don't work very well together. And when I say they don't work very well together, what I mean is that the dynamism in each layer has to be, you have to configure each tool individually for every bit of change that happens. So you get a new VM, you have to put it in your configuration database, you have to update your event manager, you have to update your performance and availability management, and if they're not all updated at the same time, then you've got a different view and you've got different people arguing about what they're seeing. By contrast, what Xenos does is unifies all of these things into one product. And by the way, Xenos has, I don't know if you guys have heard of us, Xenos has about 10,000 organizations worldwide using our software. Three of them are in Antarctica, of all places, so we, I think we are the largest management vendor in the, in the continent of Antarctica. Um, are there any Xenos customers here in the audience with me? Great, a bunch of new people, good. All right, well, Xenos is a tool that provides server management, virtual server management, hardware management, networking management, application management. So it manages all of the tiers, all the, the compute tier, the network tier, the storage tier, and the application tier. And it does it from a central model basis. And I'll talk a little bit about what the model does for people. The model gives you business to blame view. And this, this diagram over here on the right is actually live in the product. It readjusts itself every time that there's a V motion or every time you use a service profile to move a server from one blade to another in a UCS system. So it's always up to date and you can look at it and see what's going on. And I'll show you a screenshot of it in just a second. But um, what the model does 
does is it automatically keeps updated all of the mappings between the application, the, the guests, the, uh, the workloads that make up the application, what VMs they're running on, where, v, what, what hosts those VMs are running on, the association to the, the service profile to the blade and the chassis. So if you move a uh, blade to another chassis, you move the, adjust the service profile to point to it, the model gets updated. So you're always managing the real environment, the as working environment, not the as imagined when the consultants left the fire. Now, what have I got? So, in a VMware enterprise, that gives you linkages of those to the virtual machine. So, it will automatically, yeah, by the way, the way you configure this in a VM environment is you point at vSphere and say, show me my VMware environment, it discovers all the hosts, it discovers all the guests, it discovers all the data stores, it populates all that. So, you key in, this is my vSphere address, and this is my user ID and password, gives me access to it, and all the rest gets discovered automatically and maintained automatically. So it tracks it as it's moving, and it's, uh, by the way, we have our VMware ready, we passed with 100% on the test first in order to do that. From a storage standpoint, and this is new, we're also managing the storage in the same way. So that if you've got a, an application guy who's looking at the I.O. performance from, from his uh, uh, MySQL server, and you've got a, a VMware guy who's looking at storage from the data store standpoint, and you've got a network appliance um, administrator who's looking at storage appliance, we show all the links and keep up to date with what's actually connected the entire way through the system so that you can manage the uh, the entire storage environment, have these three different people communicate effectively while looking at one common set of information being collected by one set of one product, so they're going to agree on things. Right. What that gives you is unified monitoring for VMware environments, monitoring at every layer, monitoring all the guests, monitoring virtualization network usage, all of the, all of the things that are going on. Alright, now let's take a look at the UCS environment because, you know, below supporting VMware in those great big $100,000 servers called VBlox, right, are you have a bunch of UCS components and we really, really like UCS. We like UCS because it has this very cool model built in. We can point it again, just like we point at vSphere in one, one address and get the entire model of a, of a, of a VMware installation. We can put one address and get the entire model of UCS implementation. So this is our drawing of what their model looks like. And we use the native APIs, the XML over HTTP. Uh, I don't know if anybody sat in that session yesterday. I thought it was great. But let's look at this model and let's look at some of the things that Xenos does for us. I'm going to start off by drilling into uh, the hardware. Because you know what's in UCS, what we discover, you know, you ask somebody what UCS is, well, it's some chassis and it's some fiber interconnects. And so if you look at the model in a UCS system in Xenos, you're going to see the chassis, the model numbers, the serial numbers, so you've got all the, uh, all the asset tracking. It basically just makes it very, very easy to do it. There's a part that just spits them out. If we drill down a level and we were drilling on a chassis, when you're looking at a chassis, what is a chassis? Well, it's blades and it's fans and it's power supply units. And again, we're showing all of that and keeping that up to date. So as you're moving blades around, this is always up to date. So you're managing what's really there. Working down, again, one more level into a blade itself, this is where we're going to see some of the things that you can measure on a system. You can measure temperatures, you can measure fan speeds, um, etc. You can get an extent, you can find out how much memory space you have left on each blade. So that if you're if you're look, you're sitting there going, okay, I need more capacity in my system, I'm going to use a, a service profile, point a blade over another server, then upgrade this server, you can tell which servers have spaces to upgrade the memory. Okay? So we really exploit this model very thoroughly. In the same system that you can be looking at SQL Server performance with synthetic transactions to see how long queries are taking, you can also be looking at fan speeds and empty memory slots in the hardware to get this very integrated picture of the entire operation. This is the kind of tool we think you need to manage a dynamic data center. It's something that gives you that complete end-to-end -end view and lets all the different administrators work together effectively. All right, uh, there, that's the link to the service profile. Right. Now the way this shows up in the product is a view that looks like this. And this was a view about oh, a week or so ago, and it's, we, we're actually shipping it here at the conference. And so if you come over to our booth, which is two miles over, 
two aisles over, right in the middle. And by the way, we're having a drawing for an iPhone 4 at 3 o'clock, so just after this, um, if you go on over. We've got a view that looks like this, and it's a little bit fuzzy. You can't quite see it. Come over, we've got some big screens. You can see it very well. But this is the email system, and these are the systems that make it up. You can see where they share components, which VMs they're running on, which ESX servers they're running on, all the way down to your service profiles, blades and chassis, and see the entire view. So you can, when you're looking at the email service, you say, hey, what are the dependencies of this service? Okay, where is it running? Can I pull, if I pull this blade, if I can affect the email service, if I need to migrate something to someplace else, what am I going to affect? So it gives you that comprehensive view of what's going on in, in your system, all the way from the, the, the service, all the way down to the hardware, through the virtualization, through the applications that make it up. We think that's really, really cool. Is that good? Do I have any thumbs up or thumbs down? Is it good? I have some thumbs up. Yay, I win. All right. Thank you. All right, so that's what that's what Xeno says. Is it's modern design that integrates all of these things. Uh, by the way, we do it in an, uh, we can call it agent mustache, or you can call it making use of the agents that are already there. The Cisco, UCS, um, XML. There's no reason for me to put an, an agent there. They've got this great API. There's no reason for me to try to rebuild these here. Why don't I just connect all of those things to that? So it makes it very fast and very simple to deploy. All right, that's Xenos. Um, again, our booth is two over. You can see the product live. Um, we're putting up, uh, if you want to poke around with it after the show, it'll be live on our website, so you can poke around with it there, too. Okay, showing uh, showing the, the same kind of system that we're, we've got here at the show. Yeah, I appreciate everybody coming. Thanks so much. Awesome.